So yeah. let's dig into the PGA. Yeah. So uh, Gary and I made our picks earlier in the episode. Um, Gary, he was going to stick with Homa. He's going to be going with Victor Hovland instead. But that's bold. Yeah. And I'm uh, I'm going to roll with Rory. I'm not a Rory guy. Just not a big fan. But you know, I mean, he won it back in 2014. There, I think it it kind of sets the stage. You know, he can never. Augusta wasn't what he wanted it to be, but uh, he's due. And I think with just things kind of progressing now with this new, uh, like the subcommittee um, with like PGA live type of thing, it's like, he's got to, he's got to get back in the winner's circle. And I, I think this would be the perfect, just, you know, resurrection of, of his just appearance in majors. I mean, it's been years since he's won a major now. So, Again, I'm not I, a I'm not a big Rory guy. Like he's really not one of my favorite guys, but I, I think he's gonna do it. I I can't by the way, I'm rooting for your story. I'm rooting for your story, I'm rooting for Rory. The realist in me says Brooks Kepka is gonna go back to back to back. Mm. Uh he you know, he just won on live. I, we could do a whole hour on why that's not necessarily anybody else who wins on live the week before or two weeks before a major. I don't put much stuff much stock in it. Yeah. But Brooks is Brooks. We know who he is. We know what he what you know, when he gets into this mode, look out. And I don't I don't think there's it's kinda like Brooks or Scotty. If I gave you Brooks or Scotty versus the field, I mean, you know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, definitely the odds. You bet the field because the odds, this, that, and the other. But then if somebody says, but who do you think is going to win? Oh, Brooks or Scott, he's probably going to win. I'm riding with Brooksy. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with it, even though he threw that pot shot at a reporter a couple weeks ago who asked a very legitimate question about playing with Matthew Wolf, where it's like, dude, you were publicly critical of him. You traded him off your team. Yeah. And now he's in the final round with you in a tournament and somebody asks you about it. Don't be a dick. Just yeah, answer yeah, the yeah, question. Yeah, sure. You know, or, but then again, that's Brooks. We know who we're getting. I like your Rory storyline because I do agree. And for, for the, for the folks listening to this, if you haven't really caught this kind of sub line, Rory was off the PGA tour policy board after taking all the slings and arrows and then the agreement. And it's like, fuck this. I'm out. Well, now all of a sudden the money's settled on one end and Rory wanted back in a little bit. Webb Simpson said he can have my seat. And three weeks later, whether it was really a mean girls, no, he can't come back in or the story that the PGA Tour is trying to put out there that was much more procedural. You can't just have people saying, hey, my buddy's going to take my seat, so let's not have that bad look. I think it was the latter because then they did put him on this subcommittee, which is going to do the direct negotiations. Outside of Tiger Woods, I would say Rory McIlroy is the golfer that uh, Mr. Gasser – you know, head of the PIF, yeah. he has expressed kind of he's got a great he's got a great relationship with him. You know, he wants global golf, this, that, and the other. And uh, kind of quick hot take off to the side is I think in light of the recent success on Live Adelaide and how big that Australian tournament has consistently been, and how they're kind of struggling to find a foothold anywhere else in the in the world. I wouldn't be shocked if this deal involves Liv all of a sudden taking over golf in Australia and Southeast Asia to say, there, take your market, the mm-hmm. PGA Tour, we'll, we'll collaborate for the World Golf Ranking stuff, and maybe we can beef it up that way. But um, I agree with Rory back on that subcommittee. It's almost like the stars are aligned. He's at the Rory Open this week. He's won three Wells Fargo's. It was his first professional win back in 2010. And so when all the things are clicking and all the – although – X is going to give it to you. I mean, Xander Shoffley is yeah. another one who's looking to break through. He, those two are going to go back. They're going to duel tomorrow. You're going to be in for some – or sorry, whenever you're watching <laughs> yeah, this, yeah. the magic of podcasting. <laughs> At the Wells Fargo, the duel happened, and I'm sure the right guy won. Yeah. But Rory is going to ride this storyline into uh, into Valhalla, where my brother-in-law is going to be. Shout out Patrick. Oh, Patrick Pfeiffer. Awesome. He's going to be out there. as He's going to be one of the, like the whole captains or whatever. He's part of that crew. They're from Louisville. So. Cool. There you have it, folks. Brooksy. Yeah. Can't bet against Brooksy, but if you're sitting there with a Scotty Scheffler ticket, then I don't know. It's a waste of a bet because of lack of leverage, but so is Brooks. <laughs> but I think Brooks is going to win. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be cool to see him do it. Yeah, we were at the – we put up the, the flag finally. Gary and I were out at the PGA last year because um, it was just an Oak Hill down the road from here. So we got out. Right. Neither of us have been to our majors, so we went out for a practice round and just did the whole day. And it, I, I think, like we were saying, so the the Ryder Cup is at Bethpage Black next fall, yes. which is same yes. thing. It's like a three and a half hour drive from here. So we want to go down again, do a practice round where everybody was just oui. so oui. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The practice round was cool, just with everybody so much more relaxed and like actually like chatting with some of the players and you know just more open with it and stuff like that and what we remember then on that tuesday or wednesday because i remember it there was a lot of rain we got out earlier in the week before all of that 
but we just remember seeing like Michael Block on the wall before anybody knew who he was. Like as you walk in, it was like all the PGA professionals that were playing yeah. that week. But, and I'll say that is the cool thing about the PGA Championship. And shout out last year, that was a that was a phenomenal spot. Yeah. Uh, two years ago, Southern Hills, uh, my my homeboy out there in, T- in Tulsa, he he went to it, and my, one of my best friends, he sent me a hat, which I should have been wearing for this. I'm ill prepared, as you can <laughs> see, folks who see this on television. I'm in beautiful Naples, Maine, here at the Naples Marina. Shout out Captain Jacks, uh, and it's it's pretty much a picture perfect sunset evening here up in Maine. But anyways, back to the PGA. Um, Coming back to Valhalla this year with Rory and that storyline, I don't know why anybody's going with Victor Hovland. No disrespect to Gary. I think that's just a dumb pick. Um, still love him. I still love me some Gary, and I, I miss him. Sorry you can't be here with us. But, uh, no, the, there's something special about going to a major. I'm going to my first major. We used to go to the players a bunch, my wife and I, and uh, down at Ponte Vedra. And yep. you're right. Going to a practice round is dope because they are a little looser. You might get a glove. You might get a ball. You'll definitely get some autographs. You'll get people to kind of head nod at you, maybe get you know talk to you, take a picture. When it's go time, it's go time. Laser focus, like Tom Brady says. Uh, but I'm excited. I haven't been to a major going to the U.S. Open. And we're doing that, too. We're doing a practice round, and then we're doing the first round. And so I think that's going to be in, right right in between that. We're going to go to a sunset round and play Tobacco Road. And, oh. Uh, Cool. We're playing the other Mike Strands course, Todd Hill Farms, on Monday of that week. So it's going to be a it's going to be a dope little satellite week for Boudreaux at the U.S. Open. Uh, yeah. And and I and I can't wait to check in with the basic bogeys there. But the thing about the PGA, you said it. You mentioned Michael Block. I used to be very biased in my love for Ponte Vedra and the Players Championship, and I used to say that the Players Championship was the strongest field in golf because you know for a long time in the '80s and '90s it was kind of considered the strongest field in golf. You know, the idea was to try to take the best in Europe and integrate them into the PGA Tour for this kind of Players Championship, mm-hmm. pun intended. But when you take three steps back, the PGA Championship invites the top 100 golfers, as determined by the official World Golf Ranking, which despite some crybabies out there, do still mean something. There's thousands of other guys that, that are in that system. Just because a couple dozen said we're out doesn't mean it changes everything. So you get the top 100 there. Then you get the PGA of America saying, you know what? Hey, Taylor Gooch, you're good enough. Come on in. They hand out some of these guys, Got that exception. and you really yeah. do have probably the most the most difficult professional field. And then you sprinkle on top the Michael Blocks, these 20 to 25 PGA professional teaching pros who are the lifeblood of you know amateur golf in reality. Yeah. You know all the teachers and all the people who run those golf courses. They get a chance to shine, and then you get a block party, and you know, and it's a scene. So the PGA Championship has slowly become one of my favorite majors because of the quality of golf. I understand when people say. You know, what, would you, what, what do you want to win? Well, I want to win a green jacket because then you get Augusta, you get this, you get that. The U.S. Open and the Open Championship kind of carry more historical prestige. But, you know, when, when push comes to shove, the PGA Championship is the creme de la creme. It's the best of the best. It's the people who do this and only this for their entire lives to get ready for it. So it's one hell of a week, and it's always, you know, it's always a good show. Uh, I just definitely think at the end of the day, we're going to see Brooksy with one more Wanamaker, and yeah. uh, you're going to see C- Rory kind of crying in his suit. I, I know we got to go, but I got two quick questions for you. Mm-hmm. First, this was just posed to me at the bar a little earlier. Do you think Rory McIlroy is ever going to win a Masters? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think Phil with his U.S. Open gap, and I think Rory's going to have that Masters gap. Part two. Taylor Gooch, what are your predictions for the Goocher after pounding his fist on the table <laughs> and getting the invite? Does he have to make the cut? Does he have to finish top ten? Uh, is, is getting that invite proof enough that you know there are still some good golfers out there? I think he's got to make the cut to prove himself. I don't know if he will, but I, I think he's you know I think his mouth has written so many checks that if he doesn't finish top five, top twenty to guarantee an invite back next year, yeah, because that's about the limited you know. But, but uh, I do think, you know, put up or shut up, man. You, you know, you, and he also famously at a live event recently when they said, you know, Graham McDowell, former U.S. Open champion, he's playing in a qualifier. Jason Kokrak, he's playing in a qualifier. You know, Brooks, he's got his exemptions. And then when they asked the last member of Smash Golf Club, no. I just, you know, I hope he cheers up. I hope he really leans into it because I do think if he, if he walks around, if that chip on his shoulder gets too big this week, He's not going to be able to kind of you know follow through and really make it happen. Yeah. So he's got to take three steps back. The world doesn't hate you. You just brought all that kind of spotlight on you. So go out there, shoot some low numbers, and we'll see what happens next. Yeah, that's well, going to be an interesting one. I'll get started right here today when this episode's airing. So uh, those are our picks. Thanks again to Bud for taking the time. Appreciate it as always.